I'm going live. Huh? I'm live. Oh, cool. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. I'm about to. Hello, everyone. So hopefully I fix some technical issues this time around. Uh, it looks like there's still a lag on this video, but I guess we'll figure that out again later. Um, but hopefully this works better this time around. And I can see the chat. Um, so we'll just give it a few minutes here to make sure everyone who is gonna come in comes in. Um, yeah, it looks like everything else is okay. All right. Um, but I hope everyone's doing good. Maybe we'll see if Wednesdays are better than um, Tuesdays for people. Um, I mean, besides anyways, yesterday, I'm sure people had other things on their mind. Uh, so... It was better to do it today anyways. All right, but anyways, I guess we'll get started here. Um, yeah, hopefully every, it looks good too because it's a little darker over here in this corner. I'm trying to get as much light as I can in here. Give it a few more seconds. So I'm going to be doing uh, the diamond painting that I unboxed in my last live, which is My Garden Needs Tending with Poison Ivy. So you can see her hair. She's really, really pretty. Um, if you, like I said in the last one, if you have seen my background in my other videos, you saw, I'm sure you've seen my giant Harley Quinn collection behind me and I did have a few things poison ivy, so she's gonna fit nicely once I have my nice big wall to decorate soon. Make sure I got enough wax in my pen. That should be okay. I haven't changed it from the last one, but it should be fine. Uh, so I just started working up in the corner here. I didn't do anything since the last live. I got my giant, <laughs> my giant diamond painting tray here. Um, I have it linked down below if you want one, but I don't think I'm gonna get any use out of this today because they're all little, well, maybe. Maybe with the black I'll use it. Um, but yeah, that was pretty funny to finally get that and open it up. Um, so I guess I'll start with a little disclaimer. You will hear some noise in the background, especially more today. Uh, Amaris, that's such a pretty name. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Amaris, that's a really pretty name. Hi, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me. I'm doing great. Um, it's my quiet time right now. So <laughs> with two little girls, it's it's hard to find that nowadays. But as I was saying, um, today I have my husband next to me. On Wednesdays, he's usually off. So if you hear someone munching in the background, that's who it is. And he's playing World of Warcraft, so you might hear a lot of um, uh, keyboard and mouse clicks. Um, we have one, two tables in this house, and the other table is, it has my main computer on it. So um, it's, if I wanted privacy, it's really hard to get <laughs> in this house right now since we don't have um, any of our home goods yet. It's still on its way from Germany. So hopefully it'll get here. Well, it doesn't matter if it gets here soon because we are in the process of uh, buying a new house and uh, it's not ready yet. Won't be ready till about January. So we're stuck with what we got till then, which isn't much, but we're making it work. So let me get a color started here first. Oh, let me finish with the disclaimer. <laughs> you also might hear my, my dogs walking around, they're jingling. And then my little one sounds like she's not taking her nap. <laughs> you can say hi. Hi. Okay, go take your nap. This is, this is usually her nap time, but she's obviously fighting it right now. <laughs> go, 
Yeah, your bunny. Go take a nap, please. Go take your nap. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, she should be napping. Some days she's better. Most days she's better at going to sleep at this time than others. Um, so yeah, so those are the noises you'll probably be hearing in the background today. Um, but otherwise, let, like I said, let me get, let me put this here so it doesn't fall back. Let me get a color and we can get into it today. Let's see, I think I'll start with the little down arrows, 700. What color is that? A darker green. 700, maybe over here, here it is. So this is a diamond art club kit. I really enjoy their diamond paintings. They have really great quality. Um, I do have a few videos on my channel already that um, show me unboxing some other paintings as well, if you wanna check that out. So let's see, let's cut this open. Oops, sorry. Um, put some in here. Ooh, this one's got a little static in it. That's fine for now. That's good. I guess I'll... Yeah, you can see it's got a little bit of static in there that's stuck to the bag. Oops. There I go. Making a mess again. All right. Come on. Yeah, a little bit of static. Let me get this one. Okay. And then, oh no, I forgot my Sharpie. I'll tell my husband when he comes back. 700. Put it with the bag so I don't forget. <laughs> All right, so today I was thinking we can do um, these questions that I found. It's like 200 questions, um, just unique questions to get to know someone. So I figured we'll do that today. Um, like I said, because I haven't really done any like get to know me videos other than the last one. So I figured it'd be fun for today. Um, how do you feel about fast fashion? <sighs> to be honest, it's really annoying <laughs> because I usually don't go with the fashions normally. Um, I, I usually kind of have my own style that I like and usually my own style is always during the times when they don't sell that kind of style. So like right now, for example, there's a lot of like, um, what do you call them? Not midriff. Um, oh my gosh, I totally blanked. Um, the cutoff shirts the that show your midriff. Uh, it'll come, the word will come to me later, but um, I'm not into that, but it seems like everywhere only sells that type of style and my body is not made for that type of style. And I think that's why I turned to like making my own stuff. Um, as well, I mean, as far as costumes go. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I fast fashion, I mean, there's a lot of documentaries I've watched on it about how it affects the um, environment because it's thrown away so quickly. It's not made um, with good quality. So, you know, and then like you can't, I think you can recycle fabrics, but a lot of it isn't. And it's like when they, they trash it and stuff, it's really bad. Like I said, there's a lot of, a few documentar documentaries I've seen about it. Um, time to time I'll find something, but for me personally, I actually do wear my clothes quite a bit. I, once I find something I like, I... I'll wear it till it's done <laughs> for the most part. Um, I mean, 
it's just the way the world is at this time, unfortunately. Um, you know, with a lot of the economy struggling and stuff, it makes sense why people would buy the cheaper alternative to stay up in, you know, stay up in the fashion as in to express themselves and whatnot. But, um, I mean, I guess that's my opinion on it. Like I said, if I ever find something that's fast fashion, I actually try and get as much use as, as I can. A lot of my clothes do last a long time. And if not, then I usually donate it to, um, I'll donate it to like Goodwill or something like that. I usually don't throw away clothes. I actually feel really bad throwing away clothes because of the fact that I know how much fabric is. Let me get you guys a little closer. I feel like I'm really far away right now. Hopefully that's okay. Um, but yeah, I know how much fabric is, so I think it hurts my heart every time I have to like eventually throw away something um, that's been done and worn or anything like that, non-savable. Um, so yeah, so I guess that would be my opinion on it. Am I still in focus? Let me move you over a little bit more. Make sure you guys are... There we go. I hope that's better. Come back here. I've started making my own Lolita wardrobe. That's awesome. I, I know Lolita is very expensive to begin with. So I know that um, making your own is more beneficial, I think. If you're not sure or you don't have the, like the, you can't afford it kind of thing. It's definitely, um, I think it's just as easy to make your own. And then you can get your own, um, like I said, your own style as well. There, I mean, don't get me wrong, like to buy one, like the quality is definitely there. If you get like name brand um, Lolita clothing, clothing, the quality is definitely there. I do have one um, Angelic Pretty because I wanted to see how it was constructed. I wanted to see how they put it together. <laughs> so... That's, I do have one. Hopefully, like I said, in a future video, I can pull it out and show show which one I have and whatnot. Um, but it's not too hard to make. It really isn't. I think the where the pricing comes in besides the quality of it is the, oh, what is it? The custom fabric. It is a custom fabric that they have specially made. So I think that's where you're money um where money talks in lolita fashion for the most part yeah sewing by hand i feel that when you make it yourself yes you, i mean you you especially after you've made something and it's like it comes out better than you expected it to that's the best feeling i think that's what it's i think it's a top like reason why i like to sew is when I see something in my head and then if I make it and it comes out how I imagined it or better, it's the best. I, it's so satisfying, super satisfying. Um, but yeah, by hand it does, I'm, I imagine it does take a very long time by hand. I haven't tried anything by hand. I've actually been thinking about doing something by hand for now because I, like I said, I don't have my sewing machines at this time. Um, like a small like project. So I have to start researching like different hand stitches and um, stuff like that. So I might, I might do one. Like I said, I got a couple months before we might get into our house. So there's plenty of time <laughs> to uh, experiment. Um, but yeah, hand sewing, I have to, I've seen quite a few like cosplayers or um, I follow a lot of groups on Facebook for sewing and there's some people that do make these elaborate things by hand and they're amazing and I, and they're super detailed. So I definitely have a lot of respect for those people who do that. I mean, that's how it was done back, way back when and those dresses are stunning. Those that clothing is like just stunning how they were able to do all that and it's all 
hand work, hand done. But um, yeah, so let's get into the questions. So I got my 200 questions here. They're supposed to be like unique questions. So I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in where to find these questions at. But um, so it says the first question, let me put it here, it's not gonna be in frame. All right, the first question, what's your favorite way to spend a day off? Well, I am a stay-at-home mom at this time. I'm super grateful for that. My husband works really hard. He is military, so um, I pretty much follow him around. And so I guess I work every day in a way. <laughs> Because like I said, I got I have two girls, and they're very young still, so they need a lot of, they have a lot of needs. <laughs> but when I can find quiet time like this, this is pretty much like how I like to spend it. I'll do diamond painting now, or my little cross stitch I got going. Um, otherwise, normally I just like to sew. I like to make, I like to do crafts. And if I'm not crafting, I am playing video games. Uh, although I stopped playing video games for a little while and I was reading a lot. So I kind of flip flop between reading and video games. Um, yeah, if I, if I read, it's usually some sort of fantasy, fantasy novel or um, young adult novel. And if I play video games, it just depends on my mood. Um, right now, I've actually been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. That expansion's coming out soon, so I'm just trying to catch up a little bit. Um, I haven't played in a, like years, like two years, for the most part. So I had a lot of I have a lot of catching up to do, which is fine. It's actually really relaxing to do all the quests and stuff. It really relaxes me. Um, or I'll play on the Switch, um, and I'll play games on there. There's a few things I flip-flop through. Um, I was doing Animal Crossing again just recently. But yeah, that's usually how I like to spend my time when I have it, where I don't get too many distractions, like nap time. Um, yeah, that's my day off. What type of music are you into? This is question number two. I love rock music. I love everything from classic rock to alternative to death metal. <laughs> and everything in between. At least I used to. It's music is not the same as it was in the 2000s, 1990s. So I have kind of walked away a little bit from rock music. I still love listening to the old stuff. I guess that's why when I was growing up, you know, my dad always had KR 101 on with all the oldies. And now I know why, because you just, you grow up with something and then nothing else is as good. But once rock music started to change and I wasn't as into it, I started getting into EDM music. So I do listen to a lot of EDM. Usually when I'm sewing, I'll listen to EDM because I kind of don't have to pay attention. If I listen to rock music, I pay attention to the lyrics and it can distract me a little bit. Um, but EDM, most of the time, like it kind of it's motivating with the upper beats and stuff. So I do love EDM music. Um, yeah, I think that's. I don't think there's anything else I'm crazy crazy about. But yeah, I was very big into rock music. Um, right at well, from high school up until my mid twenties, I was into rock music. Um, question number three, what was the best vacation you ever took and why? Ooh, I gotta say, 
I did a cruise with my mom and my brother, my little brother, to the Caribbean islands. It left out of New Orleans. So we spent a day in New Orleans and that was really neat. And then we went to Puerto Vallarta, Jamaica, uh, there was two other ones. What were the other two? I don't remember now, but there was, um, yeah, there was, there was four stops and it was really neat. Even like being like a teenager, it's like uncool to be traveling around with your parents kind of thing. Um, I actually had a lot of fun on that trip and I would love to do it again. My husband has never been on a cruise, so we plan to do one. We were planning like this year, <laughs> like a few years ago, we were planning when we came back to the States from Germany that we would go on one, but obviously the world had other plans. Uh, so we probably won't be going anytime soon. We want to do one to like Alaska. I hear Alaska is beautiful. Or we might do another one like that where it was out of, um, New Orleans, since we're very close to it now, um, here in Texas. But yeah, that was a pretty amazing trip. I, like I said, we did a lot of stuff that I, and I just, I always remember it, that trip specifically. The cruise was amazing too. Like the cruise itself, it had a lot of stuff to do. And, um, the food was amazing. I remember that. And you got to get dressed up to go to the captain's, what is it, the captain's dinner. So it was, a, it was a lot of fun. All right, let's get another color. So I'm gonna leave that here so I don't get lost here. Oh, I forgot to turn that off. Let me turn this off real quick. There we go. All right, let's do these little dots. And that is 701. So I'm sure it's one of these. Mm. This is so much harder when I don't have my little storage kits. Okay, it's gotta be, am I looking the right color? Yeah, it's a green. Those are nines. It's not in that one. Oh, of course it's the one by itself. And get another baggie. All right, number four. What's the next place on your travel bucket list and why? Oh man, well, our next place on the travel bucket list was supposed to be um, Disneyland Paris. We were supposed to go at the end of March. <laughs> We were about 10 days out, everything was booked, everything was ready to go, and then they canceled everything because of the virus. So we didn't get to make that trip. I actually did go to Paris though. We, I went with my oldest daughter. Um, oh, come on. In 2018, it was like the first year we were there in Germany. My husband was gone at the time, so we went with a friend and I loved it. I didn't realize I would love Paris like that and I thoroughly enjoyed Paris. So to go back to go to Paris Disney, we were very excited about it and um, yeah, the plans fell through. So that's on my bucket list because we like, well, I love going to all the Disneylands. I've been to a few of them now, and that was supposed to be the next one on the list. So we'll have to see another time, I guess. Um, so that one is my bucket list travel trip. Um, otherwise, I still am wanting to go to the UK. I think it's my biggest one, because there's so much there I wanna see. And that was supposed to happen this past May. That's what we were planning for. And everything was still 
crazy, so we couldn't we couldn't go to that either. So we we did miss out on our <laughs> two bucket list trips that we were planning to do. Um, like I said, in another time it'll happen. I'm sure it will. It just not right now. I think everything happens for a reason, so we um, will have to plan it again one day. Number five, what are your hobbies and how did you get into them? Well, let's see. My hobbies is crafting. I've always loved crafting. Um, I guess specifically we'll go into sewing first. I have been around it all my life because my mom um, is was a seamstress for the most part. And uh, it's because she danced since she was like 14. And she would always, she still danced when I was born and she's, she still dances these days. I don't know how often anymore just because the economy went down and so her classes um she doesn't get as many kids or people to sign up for her classes anymore um but she had her own company at one point but all the costumes a lot of the costumes she had for that and for her performances and stuff she made herself she used to make all our halloween costumes so she she even made my my prom dress one of my winter formal dresses and she made my wedding dress and so it wasn't until I got married and moved out that I really got interested in sewing <laughs> which of course it would work like that right um I yeah I just really got into it right before I moved out though I was doing going back to the music question I love EDM so at the beginning of all the rave scene, I actually did a lot of raving. I was a raver for a little bit. And like I said, this is before um, it became super mainstream. It's super big now, but um, I loved making my costumes to go to the raves. And so I would work all year and I'd find what I wanna do and then I would make it myself. Most of the time from like nothing and eventually it would come together in the end. And I guess that like sparked the like all my creativity and I um, continued wanting to do more, wanting to make more things. So I guess that's how my sewing hobby started, my crafting hobby as well. Um, Ona, Ona. Sorry, there's a dog loose outside. I think it's my neighbor's dog. Um, he can jump the fence. So I see him running around over there. Ona. Um, so, yeah, that's how that all started. Um, Ona, go. Ona, go. Thank you. Ona, go, go. You can boof, but no barking. No, Ona. Um, how did you get into them? Okay, number six. What was your favorite age growing up? Oh God, I don't know. Anything when I was younger, I didn't have anything to worry about. <laughs> I think that's everybody's answer. Um, I do think maybe, I want to say high school, I guess, high school times. I actually enjoyed my high school experience. Um, you know, and I want to say like my mid twenties when I finally stopped being dumb about things, about a lot of things. I mean, we're all, we're all dumb to a point every, no matter how old we get, but I guess I grew up a lot in my mid twenties and I was really enjoying myself. Like having, like seeing the better sides of life and stuff at that point. So I think maybe my mid twenties. That and my body was still 
working for me and not against me. <laughs> so maybe that too. But I'm old enough to like do things that I want and still young enough to wear. Still have somewhat of an innocence, I guess. Not an innocence, but like a carefree, I guess, carefree. Um, number seven was last, what was the last thing you read? Oh, what did I read? I can't remember what book it was now. It's been so long. I know I've read, uh, what was it called? I've been reading The Invisible Library. Is it The Invisible Library? Yeah, I started reading that. I picked it up a while ago, but I haven't finished. I'm like in the beginning still. Um, the Invisible Library. What's the other one? It was like The Stars and the Moon or The Moon and the Stars. I didn't like it. I started reading it. I didn't like it, but I didn't get to finish it because they packed everything up before I could finish reading it and I didn't want to carry it with me since I wasn't enjoying it. So the invisible library I have on um, Kindle so I can read that whenever. Um, yeah, I can't remember the book I read before that though. Oh, it was, what was it called? I really enjoyed it. It was like something about the 12 dancing sisters and then they started dying it's like giving back to the sea, not giving back to the sea. I don't know. I'll have to, it'll come to me later. Um, but that was a really good one. Um, yeah, like I said, I like to read a lot of fantasy or young adult books. Um, number eight, would you say you're more of an extrovert or an introvert? I'm actually more of an introvert. I've been working on being an extrovert because... I used to be extremely, extremely shy. There are people in, like, that I've seen after high school and they'll talk to me and they'll be like, wow, I forgot what your voice sounded like because I never heard you talk before. Or you used to be so quiet and I was super quiet in high school. Um, even before that, I've always been very quiet, very shy. And I didn't like that about myself so I started working on it and I definitely grew out of that a lot. And um, my husband is very outgoing. He's a social butterfly. So he helps a lot. I do a lot better when he's around, um, which I guess makes sense why I married him. Uh, but yeah, so it's, uh, I'm definitely more of a shyer person, but I, like I said, I've have been working on it for quite a few years. When I worked at Panera, I was a bigger trainer, so I would always work with new people. So I kind of had to come out of my shell a lot with that, and that helped because I it helped knowing what I was talking about. Since, like I said, I was a trainer, so I had to know what I was doing. So I was very confident in in um, in what I did to be able to teach it. So that helped a lot. Um, there was a few opportunities like where I had to talk to customers and managers and things like that. So that really helped. Um, I used to be so shy that if say like a cashier, when I'm checking out at the grocery store was like, oh, I like your hair. I would turn beet red like beet red, like it was so noticeable. And then I would turn even more red because I can feel myself turning red. But that these days it doesn't really happen. It happened the other day because I was having issues at the checkout and then it was like a long line. It was super busy. And so th the fact that pe I felt like people were just staring at me and like, what is going on? Why is she taking so long? Um, that was making me <laughs> turn red, but I guess they could only see half my face anyways with the mask on. So yeah, so, no, no, I'm, I'm definitely more introverted, but I'm trying to be extroverted a little more every day. Definitely these, these live videos are helping a little bit too. Um, number nine, what's your favorite ice cream topping? Hot fudge. 
I love chocolate, so hot fudge is like the perfect, I don't know, it's, it's like so chocolatey and it's, I think I love it more now with vanilla too because it's like, I don't know, it's like a creamy chocolate. It's hard to explain. Although my secret little like favorite thing to do with chocolate is to melt it. Like I love leaving chocolate in the car when it's hot and then you get back and it's all melted. That's the best. I don't know what it is, but I go crazy for that. So I guess hot fudge, <laughs> it goes along those lines. Um, but yeah, hot fudge and maraschino cherries. I love maraschino cherries. You can't overdo it, but I definitely love having at least a couple. Number 10, what was the last TV show you binged watched? I'm gonna say it was The Mass Singer. I didn't finish it yet, but I started watching it because our friend gave us Hulu. And since we were stuck in the hotel for like three weeks, uh, we had the TV there and we brought our Amazon Fire Stick. So we connected that and I realized they had the Mass Singer on there and I've been wanting to watch it. So I think I'm on like season three, somewhere in the middle of that. Um, I want to finish watching it. Um, but yeah, that's what I was watching, I guess the most recent. I do need to start The Mandalorian, the second season. Um, I know that just started. And I did start You before we moved. And I think I'm on the first episode of the second season of You. Uh, also, Lucifer is usually my TV dinner, my dinner TV. And I have to watch the last season. I think we're in the middle of the last season. I love Lucifer. That's probably one of my favorites. All right, I think that's all of those. Take a moment and switch out colors. All right, let's see, what else should we do next? I see this like little eye thing. So I think we'll do that one next. Yeah, this is definitely a very color blocky canvas. Which I'm not, I'm actually really liking it. I don't mind it too much. Um, so we'll do this little frog eye looking thing. And this is 907 and it's like a lime green. I see it right here. That was easy. Get my baggie. All right, number 11. Are you into podcasts or do you only listen to music? When I am sewing, I usually listen to music, although I discovered uh, Potterless uh, more recently, and I was binging Potterless when I would sew. So all those latest videos that I have up there um, with sewing projects, that's probably what I was listening to. I really like pot uh, Potterless. He's really funny. And it's really interesting to hear the different perspectives and the like history and the facts and stuff about the books and the films and stuff. But Potterless, if you don't know what that is, it's about a guy who's like in his mid twenties, or at least he started in his mid twenties and he um, had never read Harry Potter. So he meant to start the podcast out as like, like a comedy, like snarky comments, like make fun of it kind of thing. And then he ended up actually really enjoying it. So, oops, I got two more of the other color. He ended up really enjoying it. So I think I'm up to like where he's on the last book and then he goes into the movies and then I think he's going into Fantastic Beasts after. But uh, yeah, so I really enjoy that podcast. Otherwise, I haven't listened to any other ones. Um, he does like, uh, what is it? He does work with people from another podcast called Spirits, I think it is. And they are pretty much drink and talk about Greek mythology. 
or mythology in general. And so that sounds really interesting. So I'd love to listen to that at some point once I finish Potterless, I think. Because um, I love mythology. I am in love with mythology. Um, yeah, so that's my podcast. Mus Otherwise, like I said, it's just music. And music gets pretty dull because I listen to the same rock music over and over. <laughs> and then the EDM sometimes can kind of get a little redundant once after sewing, long sewing binges. Number 11. No, that was number 11. Number 12. Do you have a favorite holiday? Why or why not? Yes, it is Halloween. And I'm so sad I could not celebrate this year. Since we didn't have any of our stuff, I didn't have any of my decorations. And I didn't get to sew my kids' costumes. I ran out of time before we moved, so I didn't get a chance to make them. So I had to buy them this year. I didn't get to do any fun costumes for you guys here on YouTube to make any more tutorials because like I said, I just didn't have enough time. It was just, everything just went so fast and it was a big move, so. I just, I was really sad this year. I tried my best to celebrate it as best we can, but I'm the type of person who looks forward to Halloween every year and all the festivities and all that was like half closed down. So next year, next year I'm going to go big or I'm going to go big. There's no, there's no middle ground now. Like next year I got to make up for it. Um, we did watch our... I, well, I watched my favorite holiday movies, which you have Hocus Pocus, and then you have um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, so I did watch my two, my two festive movies. Um, yeah, holiday Halloween's my favorite. I mean, I'm sure you guys can tell. All I do is make costumes all year round. And it's, I'm so sad too because I didn't even have a costume this year and I do have costumes, I just don't have any with me. We didn't think we would be without our stuff this long. So it was just poor planning, I guess. Poor planning and unexpected events. Number 13. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mexican food. I love Mexican food. It could be a, like, it, there's a lot of different types of Mexican food um, or different dishes, I should say. Like I could, I'm happy with a lot of different types of Mexican food. Um, I don't like Mexican candy though, which is funny because I have a giant sweet tooth and I'm a, well, I was a baker <laughs> for like 10 years. So it's funny that I don't like the candies, but I do love the food. I think because they have a lot of chili stuff too, and I don't like spicy or like chili like that. Um, I do like mild. I can do mild green salsa, um, definitely. But yeah, so Mexican food for the win. Uh, number 13. Oh wait, 14. Do you like going to the movies or prefer watching at home? I like going to the movies. Uh, it, I like the experience and it's the only time I for sure can watch a movie without being interrupted. <laughs> if I'm at home, I can't watch movies. I don't even watch, try to attempt to watch movies anymore. It's very rare that I do watch movies. If I do, it's a movie I've already seen like a million times and it's usually for like background noise. If I'm, like I said, sewing or something and I just feel like watching something for parts, um, then I'll do that. But for the most part, I don't watch movies at home. It's very rare now. So I do like going to the movies, but we haven't done that in a while. We haven't done that since before everything kicked off and went crazy. Um, 
it was a German movie theater, so we had to wait till they had the English showings. And I think, what did we see? We saw, was it the Avengers? I think it was the Avengers, the last one. Endgame, Avengers Endgame, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, we did go to the theater a lot on base but they're not the nicest theaters so but the, i mean we live down the street so it was just easier to go see like regular movies like that but like the big ones we tried to go somewhere nicer number 15 what's your favorite sleeping position uh on my side i like sleeping on my right side I try to sleep on my left side sometimes because my neck kills me, but I just can't. I just can't. I'm just so uncomfortable after like a minute and then I have to flip back over. Although I do find that I end up sleeping on my back a little more now after having my two girls. For some reason, my back is a little more comfortable from time to time. Um... Number 16, what's your go-to guilty pleasure? My goodness, uh, guilty pleasure. I know, listening to Disney songs, <laughs> 3371, and not with my kids around. Uh, I do enjoy listening to Disney songs. I go on Pandora and you can get the, um, the Disney playlist. Uh, what number? Here we go. 3371. Oh, there's a tiny bit of these. What is this? Like a dark brown? Um, but yes, Disney, listening to Disney songs is my guilty pleasure. Um, Number 17, in the summer, would you rather go to the beach or go camping? Neither. <laughs> if I had to pick one, I probably would rather pick the beach, I guess. But I don't like summer. I don't do sun. I don't do outdoors. <laughs> um, I think that's why we're graveyard at night with nobody around um, for so long and loved it. Uh, I don't know, the beach. I used to go a lot when I was little, so it's not like I just don't go. It's I used to go, but now I just, there's all the sand everywhere, and then you try to eat something and there's sand in it, and you get in the water and the sand's stuck to your legs, and you go to sit down on your blanket or whatever and get sand all over it. <laughs> and then it's hot and you get sunburned. And then it starts getting dark and you start getting, it gets chilly. So you start getting freezing cold. So you go from like super hot to freezing cold. And you go into the water and it's, I mean, from California, I'm from California. So like Huntington Beach, it's the water's dirty and there's like jellyfish you can get stung by. And then there's, you know, I'm sure it's not, but there's sharks. And then if the wave crashes into you and you fall down, then you choke on the water because you're under the water. <laughs> See what I mean? I don't know. The beach just isn't my thing. Camping. I'm just not that type of outdoorsy girl, I guess. I'm a city girl, so I can go glamping. I can do that where there's like a cabin or something where I can take showers, like hot showers, and get ready and then go out. Um, but like, we did camping, I did camping with my best friends, oh, maybe six years ago. I was up in the mountains with like nothing. So we were not prepared, we were freezing. We were freezing our butts off. Um, you know, you had to go, you either had to go to the little outhouse area or you had to go 
in the bushes. And at night it was pitch black. You couldn't see anything, anything. It was so dark. Um, yeah, we didn't enjoy that. It was fun as because we were in a big group of friends, but it was, it was miserable. Um, we did that one. Number 18, what's your favorite quote from a TV show, movie, or book? have a favorite quote. I mean, everybody knows a quote from movies and you say them in certain situations, but I don't think I have like a favorite. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Probably my favorite, I guess. If I had to pick one. You say that and you say you should. Oh, you're right. You're right. See, this is why my husband to be around me. He knows me better than I do sometimes. Um, yeah, I love the You Shall Not Pass from Lord of the Rings. Or I like the Lilu Dallas multi-pass from The Fifth Element. Fifth Element is by far my favorite movie of all time. <clears throat> I just love that movie. I don't know what it is. I just, I mean, I guess I do know what it is, but it's just such, to me, it's such an amazing movie. And I just, I love watching it over and over and over and over and over. All right, I know this is black. I'm not even gonna look, I already know it's black. So I'm gonna take one of these bags. There's like five bags of these. 310. Um, how old were you when you had your first celebrity crush and who was it? <sighs> celebrity crush. First celebrity crush. I'm going to have to say Devin Saw from Ghost. No, Casper. Yes, Devin Saw from Casper. He was really cute. I mean, everybody had a crush on Jonathan Taylor Thomas, JTD. <laughs> but he was okay. He was okay. I think I went with the crowd for a minute there, but then I was like, you saw Devin Saw and Ghost at the end, or not Ghost, why do I keep saying that? Casper at the end, and I was done. And then he came out in Final Destination, and I was like, oh, he's older now. I'm older too. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say he's the first one that I can remember. I, I don't think there's anybody else other than that. Yeah, I think that was that. Um... Number 20, what's one thing that can instantly make your day better? Sweets. Oh, I'm sorry. My husband can make me instantly better, in a better mood. <laughs> when he's not in a bad mood. <laughs> uh, probably sweets. Something like um, donuts. I love donuts. I love chocolate uh, or zingers, chocolate zingers. Yeah, definitely that, that would, if I was in a bad mood, that's what I would want. Um, Number 21, do you have any pet peeves? <sighs> when you have kids, there's a lot of things that are <laughs> your pet peeves. Uh, it's just so redundant, picking out the same things every five minutes. Uh, leaving... Yeah, just leaving stuff around. And then I clean it, and then like two minutes later, it's back on the ground or where it shouldn't be. But I think that's a lot of parents' pet peeves. I think that's, I mean, that's what I deal with every day. So I guess that's what stands out the most right now. Um, I, 
Oh, the squirrel. <laughs> we have a lot of squirrels in our backyard again, so she sees them when they get real close. It's up on the patio. Uh, number 22. Which meal is your favorite? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Dinner, for sure. Because usually dinner for us is what the meal that's spent the most time making, usually, that you eat consistently for the most part. Breakfast, I don't do breakfast. There are some good breakfast things, but I'm not a breakfast person. I can skip breakfast, to be honest. Um, I can have something small and then call it to lunch. <laughs> uh, lunch is okay, but if I eat too big of a lunch, I won't eat dinner, so... I usually like dinner because then I go like all out at dinner. And I'll eat a big meal. So definitely dinner. 23, what song always gets you out on the dance floor? Ooh. On the dance floor? I don't know, Kenny. What do we usually dance at when we go to the balls? Spanish music. Oh, Spanish music. That's his thing, though. It's not my thing. Although it's fun. Because then he wants to dance with me. <laughs> um, I mean, anything EDM. That's why I love it so much. Make, yeah, anything, like I said, going back to the music question, anything rock music, anything um, EDM, I'm like there. Uh, when, 24, when you were a kid, did you eat the crusts on your sandwiches or not? I did. I know I did. I don't think my brother did. I didn't mind the crust. Yeah, I, I eat the crust. I still eat the crust. Uh, I do enjoy Uncrustables though. But if I made my own PB&J, uh, I wouldn't put that much effort into it. <laughs> like just slap on the stuff and, and eat it. Uh, 25, what activity instantly calms you? Uh, well, I think I said it in the beginning, but this definitely calms me down. Especially since it's color blocky, like I'm not really paying attention too much. And I'm just like going through the motions and that's really relaxing. Um, like I said, the wor World of Warcraft has been calming me down lately too. The questing, because it's it doesn't take too much... Um, thinking to know what to do like if you've played world of warcraft a lot of the quests are they're pretty similar to each other every once in a while you get a random one where it's like what am i doing what are you what is going on here uh, but for the most part it's like go to this area kill all the things collect these things kill this little boss person in the corner um get something from him or whatnot and then go turn it in and then you repeat the process until that area is done, and then you go to another area and do it all over. So I really like I really like doing that. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything else otherwise right now. If I sit and watch TV or something, I either feel like I'm wasting time. Um, or things like that, so I don't, I don't know, watching TV kind of, I can get lost in TV, but it, it makes me feel yucky afterward. I don't know what it is. Um, number 26. Ideally, how would you spend your birthday? Ooh. Well, my birthday's in January, so it's usually cold most places. 
Um, I like going out and doing something fun. Like I could go to like Six Flags or something like that. Or like somewhere like, not to be, not specifically, but like if I were to go like, we went to the Winchester Mansion, like to do that, something like that on my birthday would be fun. I mean, we've been there, but just saying like something like that. Um, some sort of like haunted tour would be fun. Or I wouldn't mind doing Disneyland. Disneyland would definitely do Disneyland. Theme parks. I could do theme parks. Yeah, that would be I like I like doing stuff on my birthday like that. Like making the day worth something, I guess, than like sitting, sitting all day. Uh, number 27, what do you do on your commute to and from work? <laughs> I don't work, so I guess my commute from going upstairs to downstairs is to get everything together before I have to wake up the girls or they wake up, do what I gotta do before they do. Like I usually work out in the morning, so I'll make my pre-workout, um, things like that. To let the dogs out. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I guess that, that would be like, mm, not a commute, but before the day starts. Number 28, do you have a favorite type of exercise? I like doing strength training. I love weight training. Um, I haven't been to a gym in a long time, uh, but I do have my own set of, what is it, dumbbells? And I'm really missing them right now because they are, like I said, everything's packed up. It's not even here in the States yet. It's still in shipment. It usually would be here by now, but with with everything going on, it slowed it down, which is fine because we need our house to put everything in to begin with. So I won't have my dumbbells for a while, but I do love strength training and I feel like I'm, I need that kick right now to get my button gear because it's the cardio. I like the cardio and the hit workouts, but they only get me so far. The strength training, I feel like I see more results strength training uh, than anything else. So, but I do enjoy working out now. I used to be a person that would laugh in your face if you ever asked me <laughs> if I worked out, but now I'm like, I feel good the rest of the day if I work out. If I don't, I, I feel like mush and I feel like I gain like 10 pounds doing nothing that day. Um, 29, what's your favorite season and why? Well, that goes along with the other question about my holiday. I love the fall because it's like perfect weather. It's not too hot, not too cold. And I love the changing of the leaves for fall. Here in Texas, there is no changing of the leaves, I don't think. I didn't see any. <laughs> we got here at the beginning of September. Um, so we're well into fall now, but I didn't see any changing leaves. Germany, it was beautiful. It's like a postcard over there. They get all the seasons. Um, but I love the weather. I love the festivities as far as like Halloween. Halloween's my favorite holiday, so it makes sense. Uh, it's just a calmer time, I think. Yeah, because after summer, it's like, okay, everyone had their fun. Everyone's going back to school and, and everything. So it's, it gets quiet and calm again. I think that's, that's another thing I like about it. Um, number 30, what's the best joke you've ever heard? Oh, best 
joke. I don't know. You hear a lot of jokes everywhere. It's hard to pick one. I can't think of one that I've laughed at really hard recently. I mean, I have a lot of inside jokes, but that if I told them to you, it wouldn't be funny if I had to explain it. Um, I mean, they're inside jokes. They're usually funny to people who are on the inside. <laughs> uh, my husband likes to tell a lot of dad jokes. Some of them are pretty funny. He told one recently. I don't remember what it was, but I remember laughing at it. I don't remember now. Um, okay. Number 31, what's the phone app you use the most? My email map, my email app, my regular email. I don't know why I'm always checking my email. Otherwise it's usually like Facebook or Instagram. Although I haven't been on Pinterest a lot. Recently, I have been on Pinterest a lot. Um, I like my sh shop app that tracks your packages and it gives you like updates and stuff where your packages are. So I don't have to like go into the email and like find the tracking number, put it in the site, see where, like I can just, it'll just update me. So I like my shop app. Uh, And then I guess the web browser app, right? YouTube. More, I mean, I'll watch YouTube more on the computer, but I use it on my phone to do my workouts. 32, would you rather cook or order in? I'd rather order in, to be honest. Although, <laughs> on a, Oh. Um, cooking's not my favorite thing to do. I like baking. If you told me to bake something, I'd be more than happy to. But cooking, I'll cook because I have to cook. Because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> uh -oh. But I, to be honest, I'd rather... If I could order food every day, I would want to do that. Unless it's like homemade food, like my mom made something or my husband's mom made something to eat. Like that's the best. I don't want to cook it. I'd rather have someone else cook it for me. Um, where are we? 33. Have you ever disliked something and then changed your mind? Avocado. I used to not like avocado at all. And when I grew up, there was a giant avocado tree in our backyard. And I just would never, oh yeah, it's a neighbor's dog. I would never eat them because I didn't like them. And now I like avocado. I mean, I wouldn't sit there and like eat an avocado by itself, but like I like mixing it with like food and sandwiches or uh, with all the Mexican food I eat. <laughs> or try to eat anyways when I get the chance. Um, yeah, avocados. Um, 34, what's your favorite board game? Ooh, that's a good question. We play quite a few board games, but like, the board board games, not like the mainstream board games, like, you know, Monopoly, we're sorry. We actually play board games. So we have a few that we like to play. We play Mansions of Madness. Uh, we play that one a lot. Is it my favorite? I don't think it's my favorite per se. We also have Mice and Mystics, and I like that one a lot. That one's really cute. I think I like Catan. Catan? Catan. I like that one a lot. I like the strategy of it. Uh, yeah, definitely Catan I like a lot. 
I mean, so far, we don't have, like, a million board games. We haven't played a million board games, but we've played a, a good little handful now, and I like I like that one the most so far. They're all really good. Don't get me wrong. Like, all the games we have are actually really fun, but out of my favorite that I like to do is probably that one. Which they have an app on your phone. So if you want to check out Catan, you don't have to buy it is a board game in store. You can actually download the app and play online. And you can play with friends. Uh, number 35. How do you take your coffee? I don't drink coffee. Not at all. I am not a coffee drinker. And I'm sure you're like, how do you have all the energy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I do it. It just happens. Uh, I'm gonna use it till I don't have it anymore. If I really need a boost, I'll... Actually, the boost that really gets me going now is my workouts and the pre-workout. It has to be like the pre-workout that's getting me going. Because the other day I ran out and I tried to do my workout without it and I was not feeling it. I felt really stiff and like, uh, like I gotta do this again. Um, so the pre-workout definitely helps. Oh my gosh, look, I have a diamond in my, <laughs> in the fold of my hand. I didn't even know. These things get everywhere, it's really funny. I'll find, uh, well, before we moved, I, would, I was finding them in the most randomest spots throughout the house. Uh, but yeah, my pre-workout gets me going more than anything else. So I had to go buy more today or yesterday. I went and bought more yesterday. 36, what's your most prized possession and why? Prized possession. Um, I mean, do I have to say my kids? <laughs> I made them, right? I don't know. I love my computer, too. My husband built me a very beautiful computer. He's a computer nerd, IT, all that. So he made a really cool one for me. I really, I, I mean, that's mine personally. So I guess it'd be like my prized possession. My dog, Taco, he's 17. I've had him for 15 years. <laughs> he was the first thing I bought with my paycheck after college when I got my first job at, well, not my first job, it was my second job, but my first real job at um, Panera. Yeah, he was, when I got my first paycheck, I went to the pound and found him and took him home. And he's still going. That's who you hear wandering around more than anything. The barking is Ona. She's the corgi, but my um, chihuahua mix. He's 17. I guess I'll stay taco. He's my first baby. He's, he's still going. He's, he's doing all right. I don't know how much longer we have him, but he's doing pretty good for his age. So we'll see how how much time we got with him. He gives us scares, trust me. There are days where I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna make it. And then by the next week, he's like a puppy again. Um, 37, is there any product that you couldn't live without? I mean, toothpaste, I guess, right? You gotta brush your teeth. Is that like a sensible answer? Toothpaste? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if I had toothpaste and nothing else, I guess that's all right, or my toothbrush. I can't think of anything else I would like absolutely need. I would say shampoo, but 
I mean, I'd rather have teeth in my mouth still than... <laughs> I'd rather have teeth in my mouth and a nest on my head than vice versa. Than like silky hair and no teeth. <laughs> I don't know if that was the way I was supposed to answer that question, but that's what that's all I got. Uh, 38. Do you sleep with a top sheet? Why or why not? I sleep with a million blankets and a million pillows. Even when it's like super hot, I at least have to have like my comforter. But it's like the the down comforter. So it's supposed to keep you cooler when it's hot. Um, but I have to sleep that. Even if it's just like in between my legs. Um, I, I don't know. I can't sleep without, without one. Without a blanket. Or is it asking like top sheets, like you make your bed and you have like a top um, blanket? Is that what's I don't know. Uh, 39, if you could have any exotic animal as a pet, what would it be? Well, when I was younger, I would have said outright a ferret. I had always wanted a ferret. And then somewhere along the lines, that changed and then I had always wanted one of the little sugar gliders. And then that changed. And then I wanted a parrot. Had a parrot. Realized they're not for me. <laughs> so now I'm happy with just dogs. I, uh, we do have fish now. We have little tiny glowfish. And I'm actually really enjoying them. They have more personality than I thought they would. Uh, so we have a couple glowfish. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my dogs. I'm a dog person. I think when you get more exotic, it gets a little more demanding. Not demanding. Yeah, I guess demand, demanding because they have more needs than, um, than you might be used to as a normal pet. Because um, they'll have more, you know, special needs like certain foods they have to eat and certain places you have to take them to groom and or get cleaned or vet or whatever. Uh, number 40, what would be the first thing you do if you won the lottery? I mean, I guess what everybody else does, pay off all my bills, buy a house. Well, we already buying a house, but <laughs> pay, off. <laughs> pay off the house, buy the parentals a house. Not even, we would build them a house in our backyard. <laughs> uh, if it was something fun that I had to do with the money, I'd probably invest it in something I'd like. You know what, what I would love to do is have my own, um, like, like a craft fair, but not a craft fair. Maybe like a craft convention. So you would still get to do like the cosplay and all that, but it would be like, um, like you would go and you'd be able to buy like craft supplies from like craft suppliers in the area or like things like that. So you, but like not just like quilt, cause I've been to a quilt convention that was kind of, it wasn't the same, but like where people make, like, you know, you go to Comic-Con or whatever, you have people like artists, you have like um, the cosplayers and stuff, but then I want it to be geared more toward like craft supplies as well. So you can find like unique craft supplies and things like that. Oh, the dream. One day. That's what I would do with my million dollars. I'd invest it in that sort of thing um, for fun for fun of course uh, 41 what's your favorite thing about your current job well as a stay-at-home mom the favorite thing about the day that I enjoy doing is that I'm on my own hours that I have so much work I need to do 
as far as like cleaning and taking care of the girls and the dogs and the husband I think the best part is that I can do it on my like things that I want on my time so if I want to wait five minutes to do something I can if I want to get everything done in the morning so I have the rest of the day like I can do that I don't like the the schedule I think that's part of the reason why it was so redundant at Panera for me. One of the reasons that put me off of it after a long while was the repetitive timeline. You had to, like, it was the same thing every day. And you had to get everything done by a certain time. So I think... I think now that I have my own time frame, like I'm really enjoying the the personal timeline. What time is it? Okay, we got ten more minutes. Um, forty-two. What annoys you most? What annoys me the most? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of things that, like, I guess get on my nerves. I don't know what would be the most. Like I said, the repetitive cleaning. I think that's the biggest thing. I guess that makes, that could be it, where... I'm cleaning up the same thing 50 times and it's not even my mess. <laughs> I think that's the most annoying part ever. You go and clean up a room, spick and span. Five minutes later, you walk into another part of the house and there's a mess there. So you start cleaning that one up only to realize the other room is a mess again and none of it is mine. It's all somebody else's stuff. <laughs> I think that's the most annoying thing ever. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. 43, what's the career highlight you're most proud of? Ooh, um, career highlight. Well, like I said, I worked at Panera for eight years as a baker trainer. And when I was there, everybody wanted me to be their baker. And at one point they wanted me to continue climbing the ladder, so to say. And I didn't want to because I didn't like paperwork. I liked being in the kitchen. I liked baking. And if you go higher past baker trainer, you go into the manager position. And they don't do, they do some baking, but it's mostly paperwork and obviously managing. And I wanted to be in the kitchen. So they were always trying to get me to go higher because I did the job really well. And I did get to put in my opinion a lot of the times um, or be at certain events and whatnot. Um, but I guess that would be my greatest accomplishment is that I guess people saw the work that I did and respect me for it and and wanted me to be more than what I was. Um, but here, I guess now, in my little career, because <laughs> YouTube is now my career, um, I guess my biggest accomplishment is just sticking to it, and now I'm starting to see, I mean, so far, now I'm finally monetized. It took a couple years, but I finally made it. I, I mean, it's only a few cents, but 
I'm proud of my few cents because it means that people actually want to see what I'm doing and and um, people actually want to you know engage with the stuff that I make and everything so I think uh, I think right now that's my biggest accomplishment is that people are watching it <laughs> people are watching all right let's see I got a couple more minutes here so I'm, I think I'll do one more question let's see what it is uh, 44 do you think you'll stay in your current gig a while? Why or why not? Well, I definitely think I'll stay in my gig for a while. I've been doing it for a few years now. I plan to still keep doing it, at least for another few years. I mean, for sure. I, I enjoy doing this. I don't think I would want to stop um, because this is the only place I can consistently make costumes all year round and it's not weird. <laughs> I mean, without being in like the costume industry and, and all that. If I ever went back to college, that's probably what I would get into is the um, fashion, costuming, um, sort of fine arts. Um, but for now, um, I can do what I want. I can make what I want. And, um, and it's satisfying for me to see it done. So, I guess that's, uh, yeah, I see this going for a while. I don't plan to stop. I'm just, if anything, I plan to expand more in my channel. Like I said, now I'm stretching more into like the diamond paintings. I've started cross stitching, so now I can add that in. I just really want to try different crafts. There's so much out there. There's so many different things to do out there. I mean, I always have my sewing tutorials because I liked to make my own costumes and there were certain things I didn't know how to make and they didn't have patterns for. So it was kind of like a wing it and you just try stuff until it works. And I had to like, if there was a specific technique or a specific design that I was trying to make, I would scour the internet everything craft stores anything to try and see if i could find something to give me like at least a guideline to have an idea how to put it together and a lot of the times like i'd have to watch like five or ten different videos uh, just to make one thing and sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't so that's why i started doing my videos so that that way you can kind of see how it's done in case you're looking to like modify something at least you can see how the basic structure is made I mean, even I might even be making something you're exactly looking for. So I think that's why I um, enjoy doing them because to me, I feel like there might be at least one person out there looking for this exact thing. And I feel like I get comments all the time, especially on like my Drindle dress and my Lolita, um, the 13, what was it? Oh, I forget the number, 1300? Is it 13? No, that's the other one. Uh, the, but the 8444, 8444, Simplicity 8444. Um, that one and my petticoat, like people are always telling me how they are consistently looking how to figure out something in those patterns or to make their own petticoat. And they say that the video helps a lot. So that's all I'm looking for essentially is just to make sure that it's, it's at least helping somebody. Because in the end, like crafting is your own thing. You can do whatever you want with it, so. Sometimes we just need a little guidance in certain things to create our own thing. So I guess with that, I will have to end for today. Uh, I will be doing this. I guess I'll do this again on Wednesday. I think I like doing this on Wednesday more. Um, so next Wednesday, if I don't have a video to upload, I will do a live. So I think that's how I'm gonna work this right now just to keep things coming in on my channel since like I said, we don't have any of our home stuff right now. Uh, so any crafts that I do at this, like from this point forward for the next few months, uh, it's all from scratch. Like I have none of my stuff. I don't have my sewing machines. I don't have my, my beads and my trims and my fabrics, nothing. 
So if I can find small crafts that I can just grab a few things, I will try to make some stuff, which I do have a few. I'm just waiting for things to come in and um, make my ideas work out before I start get, um, doing them. Um, but I do plan to do a haul kind of video with all the stuff that I'm picking up. And I will try to have a Joanne, had a coupon at Joanne's kind of a video. I'm just waiting to see if I can get a mailer so I have a better example. Um, so definitely look forward to that hopefully soon. Uh, but otherwise I will just be doing this and we'll continue with the questions. There's 200, I'm at 44. So we'll start at 45 next week if I don't have a video going up otherwise. Uh, so I think that is it for today. But thank you so much for watching and joining me. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, uh, it's okay if you miss me. I know it's an awkward time now. Um, like I said, it's the only, it's nap time. <laughs> so it's quiet. It's the only time I have quiet time. Uh, so yeah, so I guess I will see you guys all on the next one. Thank you for watching.